Hi, folks. Welcome to this edition of Inside PTI. My name is Jason Webster. I'm lead commercial agronomist for Precision Planning, and I manage and direct the PTI farm in Pontiac, Illinois. Hey, today we're on the, the PTI farm in Pontiac, and I want to talk a little bit about a trial that we've been working on with banding versus broadcast dry fertilizer. So this is kind of a hot topic right now. We're approaching harvest time and we're approaching that time of the year where farmers are going to be applying fertilizer right after harvest. And so this is kind of an important time to be talking about this. Behind me is, is a trial where we're studying for 10 years. It's a 10 year study where we're looking at the, the benefits of banding fertilizer versus broadcast fertilizer. So a lot of folks in, in our area use spinner trucks to come out and broadcast fertilizer in their fields. We're looking at that type of application versus a strip till environment where we're able to ban the fertilizer underneath the corn plant. So again, this is a 10 year study. We're going to look at the, the benefits of banding versus broadcast. And I guess another thing we're, you know, I guess we get the question from farmers if, if we're banding fertilizer, we're being real efficient where we're placing our fertilizer six to eight inches deep right underneath where that corn plant's going to be. Since we're being efficient, could we apply less fertilizer as a result? And we think that's a very good question. So within this study, we take the liberty to, to harvest the crop will immediately soil test. We'll send it into a soil lab. Based on our yield goals, they'll tell us how much DAP and potash we need to spread for the next crop. That'll be our 100% rate. We'll do our 100% broadcast versus our 100% band, but then we take the liberty to reduce that 100% recommendation by 25% all the way down to zero pounds per acre. So we'll have 100% rates of fertilizer, 75%, 50%, 25%. And ladies and gentlemen, for 10 years, we're gonna have zero pounds of fertilizer on in the same strip each and every year. So seeing that, I have two questions for you. One, if we're putting fertilizer on in this, you know, zero pounds of fertilizer on in the same strip every single year for 10 years, do you think soil test P and K levels will go down? Hmm, it'd stand a reason they probably would. My second question to you is, if we're putting zero pounds of fertilizer on in the same strip for 10 years, do you think my yield will go down? Stands the reason there might be a good possibility of that. Let's take a look at our data and see where we're at in this 10 year study where we're applying 100% rates of fertilizer versus zero. All right, let's address question number one. If we put zero pounds of fertilizer on in the same strip for multiple years, will my soil test P and K levels go down? Well, this is a 10 year study. I'm not to the end of year 10. I'm, I'm at year number five right now as we look at this corn behind me, but I have harvested four crops where I've put zero pounds of fertilizer out here in the same strip every single year. Let's look at soil test phosphorus. I started with a 67 pound per acre P, P level. That's 67 pounds per acre, not part per million, pounds per acre. Four years of putting zero pounds of fertilizer on, I've taken a 67 and I've drawn it down to a 45. So at least in regard to phosphorus, we have drawn the bank down somewhat. How about soil test potassium? We started with a 390. I've gone four years of applying zero pounds of K in the same strip every single year. We've taken a 390 down to 334. So we have drawn down, but not very much. Now I'm looking at these numbers. What was the second question I asked? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I put zero pounds of fertilizer on for multiple years in the same strip, will my yield go down? Well, we're not just gonna look at yield, we're gonna look at return on investment. Yield will be a part of the formula. But this is my fourth year of this 10 year study. The blue bar represents the soil test recommendation. I sent the samples in based on yield goals. They say you need to put it on this much DAP and potash to raise the crop I'm trying to, trying to achieve. And so we're gonna spread that broadcast. 
Then, since I'm strip till at this farm and I have the ability to ban fertilizer, I say, I'm not going to put that 100% rate on. I'm going to back it down by 25%. And when I did that in year number four of this 10-year study a year ago, I made an additional $48 an acre by reducing my rate by just 25%, putting it in a band compared to 100% broadcast. I kept going. I cut the fertilizer recommendation in half, put it in my strip till band compared to the 100% broadcast rate. I'm making almost $60 an acre by doing that. I kept cutting the recommendation. Now I'm in a 75% reduction. I'm only putting on 25% of what they told me to apply, but putting it in a band. And I made $84 an acre better than 100% broadcast. And ladies and gentlemen, in year four of this 10-year study of putting zero pounds of fertilizer on each year in the same strip, I made $112 an acre more than cash flowing and spreading 100% of the soil test recommend fertilizer recommendation in broadcasting it. What in the world is happening? My economic optimum rate of fertilizer was zero. What on earth is happening? Well, I think we all know as farmers, the cost of fertilizer has gotten just ridiculously high. And what's happening here is I'm putting zero pounds of fertilizer, done it for four years straight. I'm losing 10.4 bushel of corn. My yield actually has gone down by putting zero pound fertilizer on. But when I compare the cost of fertilizer with all of these other applications, I'm not getting enough yield increase from applying the fertilizer to pay for itself. Some of the, the cost of fertilizer has just been incredible over the last six years. Here you can see the fertilizer prices uh, that I paid for DAP and potash. And for this fall in 2025, we're hearing prices of DAP near $900 a ton, potash near $500 a ton. And ladies and gentlemen, it just hasn't paid on this farm for the last four years. Now you saw my soil test levels. We were in pretty good shape. We were able to draw from the bank in my opinion, and we've been taking advantage of that. Now this fall with especially phosphorus levels so high, what we're gonna do on this farm is we're gonna continue to draw from the bank and we're gonna continue this 10 year study of determining how many years can I put zero pounds of fertilizer on before I start seeing the bell curve that law of diminishing return where I'm losing so much yield that, that I'm starting to lose money by not applying fertilizer. That's what we're trying to establish here at this farm. I, I'm not a farmer that, that says, I don't want to put any fertilizer on. I mean, I'm mad about these, these fertilizer prices. I don't want to pay these ridiculous uh, costs of fertilizer. But one of the things that I really enjoy utilizing is the strip till. And here at the PTI farm, we do a lot of strip tilling. It's probably 90% of the tillage program here at the PTI farm. But not only is it a good tillage program for us, but it also gives us the ability to ban fertilizer, just like we've been talking about here. And this allows me to flex a little bit. Everybody laughs at me a little bit at the PTI farm when I say flex, because I say it a lot. But, but what can we do to be flexible and adjust with the high prices of fertilizer? I can't do anything about the cost, okay? I can't do anything about the cost of fertilizer. I can't do anything about the price of corn, but I can be efficient in the way I'm applying fertilizer. And our data would say that we can ban fertilizer. We can reduce the rates of fertilizer without missing, missing a beat yield-wise or economic-wise. We can actually make more money on a per acre basis if we ban the fertilizer at reduced rates given where commodity prices are at as well as fertilizer prices. So we're going to keep keep uh, continuing this band versus broadcast study. Uh, this will be year number five that we harvest this year. It's going to be very interesting, not only getting year five data in, but continuing to see for the full length of the 10-year study. Thanks for watching this episode of Inside PTI.